First up is a film called Vengeance, which, by the way, is a word I apparently seriously struggle with spelling. I forget that there's an extra A in there, but it's written and directed and stars B.J. Novak, who you probably best know as Ryan the Temp from The Office. I really wanted to like this movie. I was like, cool, the trailer looked decent. It has a good cast. It's got B.J. Novak. It's got Issa Rae. It's got Ashton Kutcher. It's got Boyd Holberg, who I feel about, but... And the premise was uh, something I was like, okay, I'm on board with this. Uh, B.J. Novak plays this writer slash journalist who goes to Texas to make a podcast about a woman who has died, who he may or may not, he dated for a little bit or was seeing in quotes. And I, you, I, there was something about this film and the execution that I could not stand. B.J. Novak was really, really good at playing the douche bro, like constantly swiping a million girls in his phone character had that down pat to a scary level and I was like oh not only do you understand this I'm pretty sure this is like you you know and that's I'm not gonna say it's fine but I was hoping to see more range it it, it actually gave vibes of the Ryan the temp character from the office and, and how sort of delusional he is so you know he's this character he goes to texas because a girl that he had been sort of seeing is is murdered or i'm not even sort of seeing you know she, she probably like a couple flings but she gets murdered uh her family thinks that they are dating i don't think this is really spoilers because then the rest is etc and this movie is just a string of mediocre white male characters saying a bunch of mumbo jumbo wise philosophical sounding things that are actually absolute bullshit i'll give them credit for the delivery and i'll give them credit for managing to write the like garbage it's garbage right they're delivering these lines that are garbage but my fear is that he actually bj novak actually thinks that these lines are deep and meaningful and that he's peppered them in and he's done such a good job being like aha here you go i i don't get a sense of confidence from the beginning, from etc., like from the from the scope of the whole movie and the journey the character goes on, all these things, I don't get the sense that he has not drunk his own Kool Aid and thinks that he has written the next great think piece, etc. And I I was hoping, I think, for something something a little bit more only murders in the building where they have so perfectly captured the podcasting culture because that is a big part of this thing where he wants to make this podcast about the girl and and all that stuff and and that I think that is also how the trailer framed it and it now in retrospect feels somewhat deceptive I was it, it, this was a slog it was an hour and 47 minutes and I kept checking how much time is left because I didn't feel like there was progress for any of the characters I also would have been fine if they were like we're gonna make him so not redemptive uh or all the characters so not redemptive and they're just gonna be these wild versions of themselves but I felt like he couldn't decide whether or not he wanted to go there and he was like no I want to still be like so I will write these softer moments, but they don't succeed because the other moments don't balance them out and the other moments don't progress. And so I I don't recommend this film. I, I you know, I wanted to because I was excited to be like, hey, hey, friend who I like recommend stuff to, which is anybody who's listening to this, you're a friend who I like recommend this stuff to. But I was excited to hopefully be able to be like, you probably haven't heard this film. Check it out. I, nope. Uh, and now I am saying stay Stay away from this film. Watch Only Murders in the Building. It's much better if you want your podcast, whatever, fix with it without this sense of, and not sarcasm, but just like disillusionment and entitlement also. Oh, again, I will give credit where credit is due. He does a really good job of writing and performing these aspects, but I don't, they weren't enjoyable after a certain point. Like the gimmick was old. So unfortunately, I'm only going to give Vengeance a 1.8 out of 5 in part because I expect better from him because I've seen his stuff before I know what he's I, I mean I've seen obviously this is his first feature but I think BJ Novak is capable of better and I am disappointed in the mediocrity uh, slash subparness of this film the other film I have this week is a documentary and it's by John McLeod and I watched it at Sundance it's called my old school and it kind of came out of nowhere for me I think the reason I clicked on it or whatever is because Alan Cummings name is attached or Alan Cummings in it but I you know I don't in retrospect know if he was needed I respect what he was doing in terms of being like hey I'm gonna support the smaller film and like my name will get eyeballs on this because I really enjoyed the story on its own that the storytelling was really interesting so the story is that uh I, I don't know how to phrase this in a way. I don't want to spoil any of it. But there is a man named Brandon Lee in the 1990s who went to secondary school in Scotland with the director. 
And then a bunch of stuff gets revealed and it was quite a a hullabaloo. Uh, And, you know, they they do this very clever thing in the film where they use a lot of animation. I mean, it's it's not the first or last time that animation will be used to bridge over interviews. But the subject of the documentary, Brandon, doesn't visually appear in it. So Alan Cumming physically represents him and does like a, essentially a lip sync performance. I mean, not essentially, a lip sync performance. And then he also voices the young version of him. But again, I don't know if I need, maybe the, to, to voice the young version of him. I would have been fine with the animation stuff. What is the most interesting thing about this film to me is the fact that the director went to school with this person. He was he lived during this time and has been able to tell the story in an objective enough way that it's not just like, I, I mean, obviously the story itself apparently was, not obviously, but the story itself was enough of a newsmaker that people knew about it. Don't Google it in advance also. I, like, it's not worth it. It's so much more enjoyable to just let the film tell it to you because I think you, you might like build up your own expectations too much. But John O, the filmmaker, having gone to school with him, being able to tell the story in an objective enough way, not making fun of people, like including himself, who uh, were during it. He talks to a bunch of his classmates. You know, I think it's it's fun to see the way they interact. It's like a weird high school or secondary school reunion, whatever you call it in Scotland. But but I just really enjoyed the way it was told, the way it unfolded. It was not a story I'd heard before. Hearing it in 2022, it's not the most sensational thing, but the, the way it's packaged feels actually much gentler than a lot of the ways we get like this type of story now where it's very like, boom, bam, this is happening. Oh my God. You know, the, the, just the editing in general and the storytelling. It feels more sensitive. I think that is a byproduct of the director literally having experienced this event firsthand. So my old school, I definitely recommend it. For what it is, I give it a 4.1 out of 5. 